Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I have what's gotta be one of the most unique, interesting, and versatile shoes that's come across my desk in quite some time. That is the Under Armour Slip Speed. And thank you to Under Armour for inviting me to be part of the launch of these and sending me them to check out prior to their launch. If you wanna check these out, I will have links in the description below. But starting off with the real elephant in the room, I mean, what exactly are the Under Armour Slip Speeds? What the Slip Speeds are meant to be is number one, just kind of an everyday kicking around shoe, kind of lounging type shoe. But number two, they're meant to be able to replace your training shoe as well, so that you have kind of a more intense training shoe, but also a shoe for recovery in the same package. Now, have you ever been in a super hurry getting your shoes on, you just kind of slip your foot in there and the heel counter crushes down? Like, say you forgot to take the trash out the night before and the garbage man's up the street and your wife's about to kill you because you've forgotten it about three weeks in a row, that hasn't happened to anybody on this channel. However, if you're getting really rushed like that, and you just put your foot in, the heel counter sinks down and you get that real annoying feeling under your heel. Well, that's kind of the impetus for the design of this shoe. They're meant to be able to slip on really quick and become almost a clog or kind of like an everyday walking around, kicking around shoe. But when I first got these in the mail, I thought to myself, well, that's gonna be the same annoying feeling under my heel. However, when you put it down, because this is basically neoprene, what they call iso chill, it's, it's basically like a form of neoprene, it sinks down into the foot, but there's also a heel pad right under there. So it's almost like putting an insert into your shoe with a heel pad on it so as soon as it sinks down all you feel is that nice kind of cushioned heel pad however what happens to them once the heel counter goes back up i think is the real interesting story of these and you know it has a small footprint but it does pack a pretty big punch number one in comfort but number two in performance and that kind of all starts in the uppers and like i started talking about with the heel counter here the uppers are made of a two-layer design but what's interesting is that iso chill layer that under armor calls is actually sat underneath of the outside layer of the shoe so the inner boot booty liner of the shoe almost sinks into the flow foam in the midsole, which we'll talk about in a minute. And that's what gives a lot of stability to the shoe because when you're sitting into the shoe, whether you be in slip mode or sport mode, your foot is actually sitting underneath the very outer layer of the shoe, which is this waterproof kind of foamy material, which is providing the bulk of the side to side stability as well as most of kind of the meat of the shoe. But I think what allows the slip speeds to do a lot of the things I tested them out on, which I'll talk about later in the video, is the BOA closure system. Now the BOA closure your system is named after a boa constrictor, how it you know, tightens itself around its prey. And that's exactly what this does. Because when you tie it down, what you're doing is tightening this tine all the way around the shoe in these six points. What that does is gives you really even type tension around the shoe. But in a boa closure system, you can just get so much more even tension per tine or like per stay here versus when you can tie it with your hands because it just locks down. It doesn't have any what we call creep or loss of tension along the shoe. So once you tie it down, that's the tension you're gonna get. And what I love about BOA is they use what's called a Dyneema rope. And specifically this one on here is the TX4, I believe they're calling it. However, what it is is a textile woven thread that's made of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene strands. Now this is what's known as the strongest man-made fiber in the world. It's used to make winches for four by fours and helicopters. It's also used to lay cable down on the bottom of the ocean, as well as to tie cargo ships to dock. So with that kind of application, putting it around a shoe is kind of a no-brainer. If it can hold a ship to a dock, it can hold your foot in a shoe. And when the guy behind the BOA closure system first introduced it, it was introduced in snowboard boots because he was so sick of getting his laces all mushy in the snow and them kind of coming undone, and that's where the creep comes from. So he invented the BOA lace to put on those to keep them tied in those really wet and kind of unpredictable conditions when you're bending back and forth. And that's why they have such a great application in training, running basketball and tennis shoes. And if you look at them on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, and the Dremel does not make it through the toe drag guard, which I'm not even sure why these have a toe drag guard, but they do, and it's better than a lot of tennis and basketball shoes out there right now. So these are meant to get beat up a little bit, which is interesting. And yeah, I mean, if you are someone that toe drags when you're at the gym, I guess these are gonna be fine. But also for someone that's playing like more indoor pickleball or something like that, and you're dragging a lot, these will hold up over time. But getting into my favorite part of any Under Armour shoe with flow foam is the midsole teardown and I'm sure you know why. It's because I get to talk about diaper elastic and put all the components of it right here because Under Armour Flow Foam, which is the main midsole technology in this, is made of the same components of diaper elastic and that's what makes it so elastic, so forgiving and gives so much energy return back to your foot. I mean, if you just watch this here, I mean, they just spring up like crazy and these actually only have a pretty thin, small shank in them, more than I thought they were gonna have. So they do keep a little bit of rigidity to the shoe, but the main driver of these shoes of course is the flow foam on the inside. And if you just look at these on the jump height test, 
39 and a half centimeters. And if you just look at the video I did before on the Curry Flow 10, which has the same stuff in them, just a longer shank, those were like at around 43 centimeters. So you can kind of see number one on the Curry Flow 10 what that shank is worth in the shoe, but also just how good flow foam gives energy return, kind of stores and releases energy all on its own. And looking at the treads, remember there is no true outsole rubber on this. It's just stamped into the flow foam. Now I did notice on the slip speeds versus on the Curry 9 and 10, they do have a little bit more abrasion resistance to them. I did notice that on outdoor courts, these didn't have kind of the feeling of the four flow tro, the nine or the 10. They were just a little bit more kind of rugged. I think there's a little more of an additive on here. I mean, if you look at the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, I mean, the Dremel only bites about a millimeter, a little bit over a millimeter meter on that, which is kind of the same as kind of a standard rubber type shoe. However, the durometer is pretty similar to that of their basketball line. So my guess is they just put a little bit more of the abrasion resistance additive into these because they knew that these were going to be used on a more variety of services versus on the Curry line, which is usually just used on hardwood. What I thought was so impressive on these, you look at the shuttle test, I came in at 14.95 seconds, so sub 15 seconds on a shoe that has this low of a profile. And that's because number one, the outsole is more shaped like a hot dog. So it actually is pretty laterally stable. Number two, the BOA closure system plus the dual layer uppers does actually keep you pretty solid side to side. And number three, in the rear foot, the flow foam is just a little bit wider on there plus that abrasion resistance. They have a little bit more of a grip on an outdoor court versus some other flow foam shoes. So even if you are kind of doing a little bit more heavy side to side type activity, these still do hold up and surprisingly just a lot better than I thought they would. And getting into the fit of the slip speeds, I think if you're a medium or wide foot, you can just go true to size, I went true and I was fine. However, if you are a narrow foot, I probably would go down a half size. And if you're a medium foot and one like a really one-to-one -one fit and he's like a really glove-like fit, then I'd probably go down a half size too. And just because the shoe gets all of its stability from having more of a glove-like fit on you once the heel counter is up. So if you want that one-to-one -one kind of glove-like fit, you know, you want to go for that half size down, medium and narrow. If you're just using these as a kick around shoe around the house or a recovery shoe, I think a narrow, medium, wide width foot can all just go true to size because the BOA will lock you down when you're in kind of slip mode, when you're in kind of chill mode on these, that I don't think you need to get that one-to-one. -one. However, if you are going to use these as a training shoe, I, I kind of would go for that one-to-one -one fit profile. And because these do have the flow foam without the really rigid shank in the heel, these are great for heel pain, ball of foot pain, really any type of recovery type Type issues. So you're someone that needs something after activity to really recover your foot in between activity. I don't really think there is a better piece of tech out there right now. I do think these are better than a lot of the sandals out there because you get a little bit more side to side support. So your heel isn't wobbling around and your Achilles isn't wobbling around. So if you're somebody with tendonitis or heel pain, I think something like this is a much better idea to put on versus a recovery sandal or slide. But I think the most telling test of the slip speeds, well, that is a mouthful, <laughs> was on my treadmill when I did 30 minutes of eight and a half percent incline at three miles per hour, as well as 15 minutes in my normal mile pace on the slip speeds versus in my traditional kind of treadmill shoes I have over there. And I really had no increase in heart rate on both of those shoes. It was pretty much right down the middle on both, which means my body wasn't working any harder in these versus on my standard treadmill running shoes. If you are looking for something kind of in between a true minimalist shoe and more of a maximalist type made for running shoe, something that's gonna allow your feet to splay a little bit, you can really get a dialed in fit with these. So if you are someone kind of looking for that type of profile too, I think you're just fine with these even on the road or something on a treadmill. Now remember it is flow foam, so it is gonna last longer on a treadmill or gym type scenario versus out on the road. However, I did have these out on the sidewalks a few times running and I haven't really had that much significant wear on them. I think it's more the side to side stuff where you start to increase friction that you'll start to wear down the flow foam on. Not so much the standard midfoot or forefoot striking type running or walking. But the most surprising part of the slip speeds, which I guess translates into the curry line, I'm not sure how the uppers would do, but these are completely machine washable. They're, you know, laundry safe. They actually come in their own laundry bag. So Under Armour says you can do up to 200 wash cycles before you start doing anything to the structural integrity of the shoe, which is pretty good. So if you are someone using these for pretty heavy activity or just kind of all day, you're using these as a kick around shoe or a work shoe, then you're using them at the gym as well. And they do start to get a little bit sweaty. Um, you can just wash these and just let them air dry and they'll be just fine afterwards. And I think with how comfortable these are in so many scenarios, you know, I found it so easy just to wear these all around the house and I was doing chores, cleaning up, cooking dinner, whatever. You know, I found for heel pain, a 
Achilles pain on these much better than a memory foam slipper or a sandal because like I said, your heel doesn't move around in them. And so I think with that kind of profile, I think these are kind of the ultimate traveling shoe. So you're someone running through the airport and have to slip these off at security or then kind of get on the airplane and want a comfortable shoe for a long flight and just want to bring a shoe for number one, travel, but number two, you don't want to pack another pair of shoes to go to the gym and work out in. So if you are someone that travels a lot, likes to work out when you're traveling, doesn't want to bulk up your suitcase, this is also a really good pickup. But of course, love to know your thoughts. Are you looking for something like this, kind of like an all around kick around plus sport type shoe? Let me know in the comments down below, or are you someone that likes to have a single pair of shoes for everything you do? Like I said, let me know down below. And if you want to see the older sibling to the slip speeds, the Under Armour Curry Flow 10 go under the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and reptilian type shoelace closure systems. I'll see you in the next one.